we'd like to say hi to the Schellenbergs here, the newlywed couple from the church. Say hi to everybody uh, from New Life. And uh, hope you guys had a wonderful Easter. And we look forward to meeting you guys again sometime soon. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs>worship together. I know this seems a little different online, but wherever you're at, your living room, your bedroom, your kitchen, wherever you're watching, make it holy ground. We are here to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. His name is Jesus, and he is worthy of our praise. So raise a hand, close your eyes, sing together. We have a video, Psalm 126, to prepare our hearts. Let's watch that and then join in in the singing.
kind for all your goodness i will keep on singing ten thousand reasons for my heart to find bless the lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy name sing like never before your holy name. On that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come, still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forever Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Oh, my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. I'll worship your holy name. Lord, I come. I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you all. I need you. You're my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. Where sin runs deep, your grace is more. Where grace is found is where you are. And where you are, Lord, I'm free. Holiness is Christ in me. Where you are, Lord, I'm free. Holiness is Christ in me. Lord, I need you. Oh, my righteousness oh God how I need you teach my song to rise to you when temptation comes my way when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus you're my hope and when I cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour, I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. 
Yes, we certainly do need the Lord, as we just sang, as the song goes, He is my rest, my defense, my righteousness. Christ Jesus has gone to battle for me and has come out victorious. Good morning to you all. In church, we always had a break between music and the Bible message to greet one another. That's a little harder to do now, but I encourage you to use the comment section to say hi to one another as you uh, join us online. And other comments throughout are also welcome. We like feedback. Now, I just said earlier that God went to battle for me. Now, there's some verses in Deuteronomy 1.30, for example, where it says, The Lord your God, who is going before you, will fight for you. Exodus 14, 14 says, The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. And then there's verses like uh, 2 Chronicles 20, verse 15, that says, The battle is not yours, but God's. 1 Samuel 17, 47 also says, For the battle is the Lord's. You know, that's, that's encouraging. He fights for righteousness and justice to save his people from their enemy and from their own sin. And as the Bible tells us in the end days, when Christ returns, we will see him victorious in all things. Victorious. So knowing he is ultimately and completely victorious, that should make a huge difference in our life, even right now, right? Take, for example, watching a suspenseful movie with a friend. Your friend is on the edge of their seat and watching intently. You, however, are getting up to get a drink, maybe some snacks. Why? Because unlike your friend, you've seen the movie before. You know how it ends. It changes your responses. It might even change your blood pressure if it's really suspenseful. Or perhaps you are a sports fan out there today, and because of work or other commitments, you have to record the sporting event. And it's your favorite team. You plan to watch it later. And maybe it's even an important playoff game. Then, before you have a chance to watch it, someone mentions the winner, the final score, before you have a chance to, uh, to ah, la, 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 don't say anything. Spoiler alert, right? Disappointing. But then again, when you find out that your team has won, the pressure's off, right? The anxiety goes down. You don't necessarily know all the details, so you look forward to seeing how it all comes about. But there's no anxiety whether or not your team will win. Now, as a believer, spoiler alert, Jesus wins. You know, check this out. If Satan thinks he has won a victory through COVID-19 by keeping people from meeting together as the church, he is sadly mistaken. In the Bible, the book of Revelation, we are given a few details about the end days before the second coming of Jesus. From what God shows us, we know that Jesus is victorious in all battles against evil, injustice, the Antichrist, false prophet, Satan, and his army. Jesus is victorious. And finally, yes, finally, judgment that is due is served. Now, before I go on, did you do the homework from last week? I asked you to do some reading. Did you read chapters 14 to 16 of Revelation? Uh, you might want to fess up in the confessional section, confessional comment section below. I'm uh, probably typing fess up in the comments section right now. Uh, today, I will be covering Armageddon, often referred to as the, the final battle between good and evil, God and Satan. You know, I said last week, chapter 16 mentions Armageddon. You've probably heard that in movies, movie titles, and that kind of thing. Revelation 16, 16 is really the only place in the Bible that uses that word Armageddon. So what is it? 
Now the word Armageddon is made up of two words, meaning hill or Megiddo or Mount Megiddo. The valley of Megiddo is a large tract of land, an inland valley south of the lower Galilee region in Israel. Apparently, Napoleon Bonaparte once stood at this valley and remarked, all the armies of the world could maneuver their forces on this vast plain. Is that a pr prophetic statement? Now, there are other references in Joel 3 and Isaiah 34 and six, chapter 63 um, that you could look up later. But it sounds like this last battle will happen around and, and encompass the city of David, Jerusalem. So when will it take place? At the end of the seven-year tribulation period, after the seven bull judgments that we saw in chapter 16. Maybe you remember from earlier that there was the seven seal judgments, then the seven trumpet judgments, and then the now we've with uh, the seven bowl judgments were in chapter 16. And the seven bowl judgments are referred to in Revelation 15 verse 1 as the last of the judgments. Last suggests something else might be about to start happening. And that's the case here in chapter 16 in verse 12. As one of the bowl judgments, it says, The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates. And its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. Now, is this dried up river meant to be taken literally or figuratively? I don't know. But either way, it supports the idea that uh, protection or a barrier, whether it's physical or spiritual or both, are being taken down. That barrier has been removed. God is allowing something to be removed here at this time. It seems to be suggesting that God was holding things back from taking place before it was time, but now God is saying it's time and he removes that barrier. Now, to me, that whole idea of God holding that there until the right time is a word of encouragement to us. You know, we often wonder and battle in our minds about God's timing. Why do you wait, God? Or why now, God? You know, even the martyred people in this tribulation time stood before God in the earlier chapters and were asking God, how much longer will this tribulation go on? How much longer will you allow this uh, against your saints? The truth is, I think we all have uh, battles with God's timing at one time or another. Why God? Why now? Now, you might be wondering now about something in your own life. Uh, God, when are you going to do something about this? You know, the, the tragedy in Nova Scotia, we, we ask, why God? Why didn't you intervene? Why are you holding back from intervening? Why are you, what are you waiting for? Some might be asking, why can't we get pregnant, God? We had, had a plan and it's not working out. Others might be saying, this isn't where I expected to be at this point in my life. And why did COVID-19 have to happen now? I just started a new business and I had to shut it down. I'm not going to make it. You know, there's many reasons why we might be wondering about God's timing. All I can say is, one, we simply don't have the mind of God. We, don't, we cannot see things as he sees them. But what we do know is that time and time again, God reveals that his timing is perfect. We have to trust him in his track record. We can trust his love for us. He spared nothing, not even his own son, that he might save us. So as difficult as it is, and even though we can't see what's going on or why, uh, being able to trust him and his timing, because his timing is perfect. So this barrier Euphrates has now been removed. Something, obviously, is about to happen. The Battle of Armageddon. Who is in this Battle of Armageddon? Chapter 16, we read, then I saw three impure spirits that looked like frogs. They came out of the mouth of the dragon, the dragon being Satan, out of the mouth of the beast, the Antichrist, and out of the false prophet. They are demonic spirits that perform signs, and they go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them for the battle on the great day of God Almighty. So with demonic powers and influence, they are calling the whole world to join together to come against God's people and God himself. 
Verse 16, then they gathered the kings together to the place that in, that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. Chapters 17 and 18, they're going to have to be some homework reading there for you. There's way too much in there for us to cover, but we will take a look at a few verses. Chapter 17 talks about the woman on the beast. And verses 5 and 6 says, The name written on her forehead was a mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes, and of the abominations of the earth. I saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of God's holy people, the blood of those who bore testimony to Jesus. Now there's some mystery as to who exactly this woman represents. She represents, however, authority. We know that. And is, and is responsible for the death of many believers in that tribulation time. You know, is this a political system? Babylon being the whole world system that has fallen away from God? Chapter 17 goes on to talk about hills, heads, horns, and kings. This terminology in previous texts has been used to represent authorities, nations, and leaders. So in verse 12 and 13 we read, then the ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but who for one hour will receive authority as kings along with the beast, that is the Antichrist. They have one purpose and will give their power and authority to the beast, the Antichrist. So we see here that there will be a coalition formed. There will be political maneuvers so that the Antichrist can gain control of the, of the world and its army. Verse 14, they will wage war against the Lamb. And the Lamb is who? Jesus. But the Lamb will, what? The Lamb will triumph over them. Why? Because, as it says here, because he is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. You know, this is just a reminder that too often we make God too small in our minds. We doubt what God can do. So, so let this victory, this imagery, remove any doubt as to what God can do. Take this victorious Jesus into your own circumstances. Now, we don't know exactly what this battle will look like. It doesn't really say here. The truth is, God can speak the world into existence, so by Jesus' word, he could win this battle. Can he not? Well, that's what we see in 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 8. It says, And then the lawless one, who we've recognized as the Antichrist, will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with what? The breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. So in other words, by his spoken word and his glory, the battle will be won. Wow, it is going to be a, a beautiful day if you're on the right side. You can read about the fall of this worldly system and its leaders in chapter 18. Let me take you back to the verse we were just on, chapter 17, verse 14, because we didn't finish it, and this is important. It says, not only will the Lamb triumph, it says, and with him will be his called, chosen, and faithful followers. Hey, believer, follower of Jesus, Christian, you are blessed to be part of this glorious, victorious day when Jesus comes in glory and with all authority deals with evil Satan, ungodly rulers, and the world that sides against God. We will be by Jesus' side. Think about that for a moment. We will be by Jesus' side when he comes in victory. Jesus shares his victories with us. We're called to suffer for his name's sake in this time on this world, but we get to be there for the triumph. That is going to be incredible. It's, it's I don't know, it's, it's even hard to imagine. Wow, what we do now is not in vain, and there is going to be a day, a glorious day. You know, I believe without a doubt that we can experience that victory in part even now. You know, when we work alongside the Lord to accomplish those things that he sets before us, we experience the victory of, of the moment, don't we? When we encourage a person, when we provide a meal, or when we provide for an, a need, when you pray healing over someone, when you share the good news of Jesus and people respond, you know, we're getting a, a, 
a taste of the victory that we have in Jesus. And that's exciting. It's exciting to be part of the Lord's work. Reading from Revelation 19, verse 11, it says, I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped with blood, in other words, victorious, and his name is the word of God. Verse 14, the armies of heaven were following him, that is us, that is those that he was talking about that are faithful, and they're riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which he to strike down the nations. So there again, we see that by his word, he strikes down nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress on the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has the name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So let me conclude by summing up some points to take away from this. One, and again, I repeat this as, as I have Sundays before. Jesus is victorious. And knowing that can take away anxiety, even from what we are going through right now. Uh, Jesus can handle the battle you are in right now. I know Kim, Kim and I uh, play crib. And there was one game last week that I was so far behind and that I was just hoping, hoping to get past the skunk line. And even if you don't play crib and you don't know what a skunk line is, you, you could probably understand that anything below the skunk line is bad. But but things turned around drastically and miraculously, if I, if I can use that word for, for a game of crib, but I won. Uh, she's won other games. <clears throat> But I know crib is just a card game, but if your life is down in the count and you think there's no chance of any hope or any victory, you're so wrong. Stay close to Jesus. Jesus has a way of even turning our tragedies and even turning our failures into something beautiful in the end. If you just let him work in and through that, that circumstance. Uh, second of all, God's timing is perfect. You know, we just need to trust him. God made no promises that things would be easy. But his track record says that he does keep his promises and that he loves you so much. We know that he has our best interests at heart. Three, God invites you to be part of his victories. And I believe that's as true today as ever. Walk with him. Work with him. Do what he calls you to do. Experience uh, the glory of those victories. Number four, he battles for righteousness and justice. He fights for his people. He fights for you. As we sang earlier, my one defense. You're my righteousness. You know, make peace with God and know that he has you safe in the palm of his hand. You know, pray this with me. Lord Jesus, you are my hope. I turn to you. Forgive me of my sins. Take my life and make it yours. If it's, It is my desire that my life, soul, and mind be turned in your direction. Fill me with your Holy Spirit that I might completely and faithfully follow you all the days of my life. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, let me know. Our, our New Life family would love to assist you and encourage you as you start a life following Jesus. Let's just pray before we go from this portion of the service. Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belong to you, O God, and we want to give you honor and glory. Lord, as we look into what the future holds, we see that you are victorious. And I pray, Father, that there might be uh, a peace in our heart like we've never had before, knowing that everything is in your hands, knowing that Jesus will come 
back, knowing that Jesus will establish his rule and reign, and he will bring peace and joy to uh, your children. And so thank you, Lord, for watching after us. Lord, we know that you can bring victory into the areas of our lives where we are struggling, where we are battling. Uh, Father, meet with us where we're at, and may we find ourselves always looking up, turning to you, calling on your name. We need you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to re remind you also that next Sunday we will be having communion together, so have your, your communion elements ready. And uh, your homework this week is to read chapters 17 and 18. Uh, stay tuned. We, we will be sharing some announcements. You don't want to miss that. And uh, some updates on the building as well. All right. Thanks for sticking around for the announcements. Next Sunday is uh, Communion Sunday. So just want to let you know now, try to remember to have something to represent the bread and the wine. And if you have, uh, have it ready ahead of time for next Sunday service, you'll be able to participate together during the 10 a.m. live premiere viewing next Sunday. Are you getting all the announcements throughout the week? We are using Remind. And it's an app that uh, you can use on all your devices, and it's a way of the church being able to communicate with everyone all at the same time. It's it, We send out reminders, we send out prayer requests, that kind of thing. So if you want to be a part of it, and if you're new to New Life and you want to be a part of it, you can join. Contact myself or my wife, Kim Froze, or the church, and we will help you make that happen. Now, for our weekly uh, events, we are doing everything online. We're using the Zoom app. It's something that you can use on all your electronics as well. And it is something that allows us to see you if you want to be seen, and you can see everyone else, and uh, we can talk back and forth that way and just visit. So it's a, it's a great way of connecting and can be very encouraging. We also use Zoom for our Wednesday study, we use it for a coffee time on Thursday where we just meet together and chat and visit and see each other. Uh, we also use it for the ladies' study on Saturday. And I know the young adults have, have used some different multimedia stuff. And so they are online as well. And also our Sunday service. We don't use Zoom for a Sunday service, but uh, uh, we, we use our Facebook page and we use our website. So if you want to see our Sunday services, we air them live at 10 a.m. and then they stay on Facebook and our website so you can go and look at them anytime if 10 o'clock doesn't work for you or if you want to just listen again. Now the old building is up for sale and it looks like it might be sold before we even get to meet again publicly. So the next time that we meet publicly we'll probably be in our new building. But it is such a blessing to know that we won't be carrying both buildings and the expenses for both buildings for very long. So that is something just to, let's just praise the Lord for that. The renovations in our new building are coming along great. Robert Kashmarski has been working virtually um, every, every day and has been organizing workers. And there have been many others putting in hours on the scene and behind the scenes, some finding and ordering supplies and materials, some doing the physical labor, some doing the selling of things that we, we don't want to keep. And some that can't necessarily take the time to be there, but are bringing coffees for the workers. And some uh, some are Christian folk wanting to help that aren't even part of a regular New Life Church, but are Christian folks in town that just said, I'll volunteer and I'll help. And so that has been such a blessing to us. Some are making financial contributions. Every contribution is so appreciated. Now, it was necessary to fix and upgrade the water and sewer lines. And so that was an expense for us as a church but it, we will be we had to upgrade that we also with that added a washroom on the main level so there will be uh, two main washrooms and one being a family and wheelchair accessible washroom so that is great we also had to clean up some stuff downstairs and so there will be a, a new single washroom downstairs as well now to ensure adequate water and pressure a water tank and pressure system is being installed and so downstairs will be the water system, the heating system, a single washroom, as well as a room for storage and uh, a, a youth room, a tentative room for, for meeting for our kids and youth. 
Number two, we other work that's been done has been in the hall. The, the coat area walls have been removed. The electrical switches and lights have been moved to, uh, to open up that corner. The plumbing is virtually done. The bathrooms will soon be fitted again with toilets and sinks. So the hall and the bathroom and the kitchen will all be usable and will serve for us as a temporary meeting space. That concludes our service for today. Thanks for joining us. If you have a need, if you have a prayer, uh, something you want prayer for, please contact us at newlifekindersley.com or phone the church 463-4740. We'd love to hear from you. And please reply on the comments below. We'd, we'd love your feedback. Lord bless you and keep you. Give you praise, Lord God Almighty, who was and is always, you will reign in majesty.